What's up YouTube? I want to make a quick video. I'm kind of busy, but I recently purchased a cassette player lot off of eBay. Unfortunately, as I go through these players, it doesn't look like I'm going to have much luck on fixing most of them, but I'm going to show you what I got. So let's get started. Let's check out this one right here from Sharp. This unfortunately is a cheap player. As you can see, there's only one spindle in there. It only has fast forward play and stop. Definitely a 1980s model. Here's one that I was most excited for out of the whole lot. It's this Nyko cassette player. They're extremely hard to find. I can't find really much information on their portable players. There is some information out there about their tape decks, but nothing about their portable line. This is all metal, not really any plastic at all on this unit. It does have a record function, fast forward, rewind. It does have a more old school way of uh, popping out the cassettes. See, a very industrial, everything's metal. Cool unit, but unfortunately, when I hit play, there is only a second of audio and then it cuts out. So I'm thinking it's some sort of capacitor issue. And another thing that's unfortunate, the battery cover is missing as well. We got this beast of a player right here, the General Electric cassette player. This one also not working, unfortunately. So it'd be another cool one to have. Definitely would turn heads with this big old thing in here. It's like bigger than a smartphone. Like if you compare it to my iPhone 8, my iPhone 8 is definitely smaller. I know thickness, cassette players will always be bigger, but it's crazy. Now we got this uh, Panasonic. This is another cool one, it has an equalizer on it. Fast forward, rewind. Unfortunately, there's no audio coming through the headphone jack, but the motor does run so I hope it's fixable but I'm believing it's a, another capacitor issue which is unfortunate this one I was in the making of trying to fix but given that there was a bunch of poor solder joints and a lot of flux everywhere some of the wires have disconnected so kind of gave up on this one for now but it's cool that you got the AM, FM, and the recording, and it's a Panasonic, which Panasonic usually is pretty good. Got this Sony. This is actually a pretty good uh, sports Walkman. Unfortunately, this one has severe corrosion. The spring inside here is like gone almost. It's kind of in a pretty rough shape. I have one of these personally too. There's my model. This one's fully functional. The one I got in the lot is not so good. So the lesson here is beware and ask a lot of questions before you buy a lot. I bought many lots before, but this is the worst lot I purchased in years. Yo, there's another one that's cool. It seems like everything is functioning on this one, but the door is totally thrashed, which is really unfortunate. I think this is a pretty cool player. It's very unique too. You don't see very too many Toshiba players out there. And I would have rocked this. It's pretty cool. Got this Panasonic player. I was also working on restoring this one. I was able to swap out the belts, adjust the speed, but there is heavy wow and flutter. And I don't know what's the reason for that. There was like this powdery substance inside the unit itself. I don't know if it needs to be lubricated, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. From the front, it almost looks like one of those high-end Walkmans. And you got this Street Beat right here. These are one of those cheap budget um, players. It's pretty bad, it doesn't work well. I'm not even planning on trying to fix it because this is more like street trash. We have this Emerson right here also. This has, um, 
AM, FM, and recording on it, which is pretty cool. I was dubbing a couple of tapes on here. This also has a lot of wow and flutter. I replaced the belts, but still has that flutter going on. Maybe the same issue as the Panasonic, I'm not sure. But the Panasonic definitely has more wow and flutter. And then lastly, we have this Sony, which is actually a pretty good unit. This one is also in very rough shape. I needed to replace the belts. There was heavy corrosion. Something was going on with the mechanism that wasn't allowing it to spin properly. But I was able to pop it back into place, change the belts, clean the corrosion, and it's up and running. This is a pretty decent player. Back in middle school, I bought a player similar to this and I always thought it was really cheap because other kids at school who did dub their tapes and bring them to school with their Walkmans, they had much nicer ones, but they're like Sony Walkmans from like the 80s and 90s. This one does feel a little cheaper than earlier Walkmans, but it does sound pretty great. And it's the better of the modern Walkman line, I should say. But that's all I got for you today. Until next time, thanks for watching.